New scenes of anarchy in liberal cities as criminals get a free pass to viciously beat up cops. A 16-year-old arrested after this nasty brawl with an NYPD officer inside a subway station after being stopped for not paying the fare. The teen repeatedly punching the officer over and over again, then wrestling him to the ground and putting the officer in a chokehold. That suspect was later charged with assault and resisting arrest. But you can probably guess what happened next. Just hours later, he was back out on the street. And that is despite the fact that the teen has been busted twice before for robbery and gun possession. A former cop telling Jesse this is a direct result of the left's constant anti-police rhetoric. Now, could you imagine if this cop felt so in fear of his life he had to use that weapon, there would now be riots in the street. A cop now has to worry about getting arrested, losing his job, and getting sued civilly. So while they're concentrating on that, they very well may lose their lives. And Mayor Eric Adams also reacting and blaming the ridiculous no-cash bail laws. Catch, release, repeat. Catch, release, repeat. This person was arrested for robbery a few days ago. Now he's back. As soon as we catch them, the system releases them, and they repeat the action. <laughs> That is just, you know, that's when I say we're the laughing stock of the country, this is what I'm talking about. How do we keep our city safe when the other parts of the criminal justice system, they have abandoned our public safety apparatus? How do we keep our city safe when the other part of the system has abandoned the apparatus? You know what he's talking about? He's talking about the Democrats in Albany who will not allow the repeal of the cashless bail law. You see, that's why I criticize the man. He talks the talk, but he will not walk the walk. Call out Hochul, who's running, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and Carl Heasty in Albany. That's all it takes. He is not criticizing cashless bail. He's not criticizing it, Greg, until he says... You three people are responsible. Yeah, you know, I, I love also how they blur the perp's face. I mean, oh, we <laughs> see, we don't want to, we don't want to get, you know, we don't want to violate his privacy as he's trying to choke out a cop. In the days of old, the logic was a person who would attack a police officer is very dangerous because that means they would do far worse to a non-police officer. But it's, it's amazing how quickly decline can come when you accept decline. It's like when somebody decides to stop being physically fit and just lets everything go. That's what's happening to the city. People in the, in the criminal justice system, it's, it's just letting go. All, there are no more standards. Now, imagine being that cop, okay? It's a high-risk job, and it's going to get rough. And in the fog of war, you have to make a dozen decisions, maybe 100 decisions, split second. And what do you have around you? A dozen gawkers with phones. While you, in this, in this fog of war, have to think, like, what if I make a mistake? My career is over. Do I punch this guy? Do I do a chokehold? Do I tase him? Where's my, you know, where, you know? And meanwhile, the people filming you, they're not lifting a finger because this is just interesting stuff that, that, that we use. I think it is time to cease our obsession on law enforcement encounters because what we always see is the last moment between the trajectory of a criminal and the cop that his job is there to stop the criminal. We don't see the criminal's path that got there. So we're sitting there Monday morning quarterbacking. Doesn't even matter if it's one of these encounters, but even school shootings. We're only there to see that final Bam, when the cop meets the criminal, we don't know anything else that happened, how that guy got there. It's like showing up the movie to see the climax. And then we blame one side for having to deal what our society has abdicated. What led to that? Why was that kid out of prison? Why was that, that kid had a loaded weapon and he was to let out? These are all those steps that nobody dare talk about because they focus on this video. And then this leads to law enforcement controversies and failures and perhaps riots if it appears that the cop acted too much. So they can't win because all we're left with is this. Anyway. Okay, Katie, this kid had two priors, okay? Yep. He had a loaded weapon. He had a crossbow. Ooh. We're talking robbery. 
uh, this this 16 year old, but for him to react with the violence mm -hmm. that he reacted with, for a turnstile, right. berating the police officer before he even put him in a chokehold, before he punched him 12 times, threw him into a grate, that is hate. There's yeah. no reason to do that for a low level crime. Well, He's jumping right. a turnstile. For, for What's a, the problem? For a basic thing like paying the fee for a metro right. ticket, for a subway ticket, this is the way that he reacts. Now, the left would say that there are reasons why he acted this way, and maybe some justifications in his background for the reason why he committed the, the priors and also got <laughs> so angry when it came to the police simply saying, you can't jump the turnstile, you need to pay for your ticket. Uh, there's been a lot of tolerance over the past three years of criminal behavior, and not just petty theft, which leads to bigger crimes, but of violent behavior. Mm -hmm. And because the left has completely villainized the broken windows theory, which prevents things like this from happening, take care of the little stuff so it doesn't become big stuff, we're now in this predicament where the cops are engaging in violent encounters pretty much any time they try to stop somebody. Uh, there was a hearing on Capitol Hill today in the Senate Judiciary Committee, and they were going through all the statistics on police murders this year, how they're, they're set for another record. One of the things they mentioned, too, was that the resisting arrest and suspects running from police are at an all-time high. So yeah. that immediately ramps up the temperature, goes to the issue of police wanting, trying to hesitate and overthink what they're doing and trying to stop a threat. And it turns violent almost immediately. And the officers who testified said, look, we can get all the resources that we, we need from you in terms of money. But if we don't think that you have our back, we can't do our job. Exactly. And that's where this has led to. You know, Jesse, Mayor Adams said that he wants a special session of the legislature, the New York State legislature, along with the GOP who has called for that, not to deal with cashless bail, okay, which is the crux of the problem, but because of the Supreme Court's decision in Bruin, which would allow people to carry weapons who have legal weapons and the spiraling crime. He wants to revisit that issue. Well, maybe you could do that second, but I think cash bail is the real issue. And if he did that and put pressure on the legislature and the governor, the New York Post would be behind him, local Fox 5, all the locals, all the papers, and they would buckle, I believe. So a little advice to the mayor. It, when the police officer is squaring up with a suspect like that, his goal is to take the guy down and arrest him. The, the suspect's goal is to escape or land punches. So the police officer has to maintain his grip. And if you've noticed, he's not putting him in a side mm -hmm. uh, headlock. He's not doing the under headlock. And he's not doing the choke, because those things have All been right. outlawed. Right. He's also not shooting for a leg takedown, because that exposes your firearm to the guy's arm right here. So he's very limited in what he's able to do physically. You know the cop can fight because he's got good balance, and he threw a nasty elbow when the guy was up against the wall, and he landed a nice overhand right hand. But he ate a lot of punches. So you got to be thinking to yourself, if the cameras weren't there and he was allowed to use these skills, this probably would have been over, because the cop looks like he has about 50 pounds on the guy. And where is the taser? The police officer's uh, partner should have used a taser. I don't know where she was there. And this guy knows the law, Judge, because he's already had a gun charge. And if you're in school, remember, think about it in school. If you know you're not going to get suspended or expelled for dealing drugs, for fighting, for cheating, yep. you're going to do all those things if you know it's only a demerit. And the gangs know the law, too. So they're going to give this teenager a firearm because they don't want to catch a felony charge with a gun. So they'll give it to the teenagers. They're way ahead of the legislature. So until the legislator wakes up and figures out, we need to start trying to lock up criminals and sort of, instead of depopulating the prison system, that's their goal, depopulating the prison system. They got to get rid of that idea. Then we can start fighting crime. What do you think, Jessica? Well, I think that his partner was trying to make a valiant effort. He had a female partner, it looks like, who was being attacked by, I assume, someone right. who was there with his the perpetrator. They were both charged. Right. So she was doing the best that she could. And I kept thinking while watching this, first of all, get off your phone and help. I think that there, for everyone who's recording these kinds of incidents, there's a lot. I'm not saying that you just throw yourself every time into the fire here, but if there are a bunch of people in that subway station and you can all at least gesture towards trying to help, maybe you could have saved 
a lot of trouble um, for the folks there. I think there is a major misconception um, from people who are sitting in the capitals of these states or the people who are in charge of the reform or what could be making reforms with what voters on the ground think. And if you just did a simple focus group of the voters that you think are your main supporters, they may still say, I would still reelect you because I X, Y, and Z reasons, but nobody likes this. Mm -hmm. There is not one person that I know I have the most liberal cohort of friends, I would say, New York City liberals, that even some of them who were supportive of, get, of voting for Alvin Bragg, for instance, and everyone is petrified of this. And I keep thinking back to that case. Do you remember a couple years ago, there was a police officer in Ohio who broke up a fight between two teenage girls and ended up killing one of the girls. Mm -hmm. And the country yeah. erupted about it. And LeBron James weighed yeah. in on it. And it turned into this horrible scene where this officer must have been completely petrified for his life and the future of his career, being able to support his family. And he was cleared of the charges right. because he was doing the right thing and saved the other 16 right. year old yeah, girl nice. from this. And I can't imagine how scary it is. And nothing in the background of this kid who had already been charged with, you know, various offenses, I think equals the damage that we are doing right now to our health and public safety. And I think Adams was actually calling out cashless bail. It does not bother me that in this speech he didn't say Kathy Hochul, but people he know how it said works. It yet. You can't, he you hasn't have to. Said it. When it's, when someone does something that is even 90% of what you want, you nope. have to, nope. you do. It's you not have enough. To. Okay. It's not enough. He runs the city. It's not enough. People are dying because he's being political. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.